which is the better value, or I guess you can say the better experience here. Hey guys. So not very long ago, we had our fun shopping for puzzles at the Dollar Tree. And during that shop, I picked up quite a number of puzzle sets. Now you've already seen me do a comparison video on the $1.25 sets. And since then, I've really been looking forward to checking out the more, I guess you can say, uh, premium sets that cost $3. So you know what, I figure why wait any longer? Let's see what these sets are all about. Now, if you just so happen to be a fan of cheap puzzles, hit that like button. So the first set that we are going to be working on is called Country Fair 2, I guess. Maybe there's a part one, I don't know. And this is by Rosart. It is 300 pieces and it's 24 inches by 18 inches when it's completed. And the artwork is by Joseph Holliduke. I hope I said that right. Now these aren't just your typical 300 pieces. These are extra large pieces. And the box does have the actual piece size printed on the front here, which is something I always like to see on puzzle boxes because it kind of gives you a sense of what you're dealing with in the set. But anyways, as you can see here, this set cost me $3 at the Dollar Tree, which is a place where you can typically buy pretty much everything there for $1.25. But since they've kind of brought up the whole premium, uh, higher quality items, well, they, it's not just $1.25 anymore there. But anyways, this was only $3 and it was located in the premium aisles. And I think they had another 300 piece set. I don't remember honestly at this point, but of course, you know, I love this image because I love country fairs. I love country fair food and rides, the food more actually, and just the atmosphere in general. You know I'm here somewhere. Look, there I am with my family picking up a pretzel. This image is fantastic. And then the next set that we're gonna be working on after that one is called Fishing at the Cottage. It is also by Rosart. It is 500 pieces and it's 24 inches by 18 inches when it's completed. And the artwork is by Franco Zappa. Now, unlike the first box, it does not show you the actual piece size printed on the front. But I'm going to suspect that, of course, it's going to be smaller pieces because both of these puzzles are the same size. I'm pretty sure I said in my last video that that's my house back there, way off in the distance. Because this house right here couldn't quite possibly be mine. I mean, I know the lights are all on, but I, m the front of my house would never look that good. I'm not, I don't know anything about plants and flowers and whatnot, so, you know, there's no way they'd, they'd look that great. And plus, I don't have a dog, so there's that. But anyways... Now, in case you didn't see my first Dollar Tree puzzle comparison video, and if you hadn't, I'm gonna leave the link down in the description box below. But what I did was I took two different puzzle brands from Dollar Tree and I compared them even the, with them being the same puzzle count. But here, what we have are two puzzles from the same brand. The difference here is the puzzle count. Now, I wanna know, considering that they're both the same price, which is the better value, or I guess you can say the better experience here. But anyways, I really want to get started on these and, and see what these pieces are like. So you know what? Let's start opening these boxes and let's see what we got here. All right, so let's get this started. Let's start with the 300 piece puzzle first. So these particular ones do have some tape on the side here so let's very carefully pull this out or better yet let's just cut it instead before i damage my boxes oh my goodness are you serious oh my goodness i must say um the tape itself is pretty darn strong all right well so much for trying not to damage it but anyways let's open this up all right, so nothing else in the box there, and here are the pieces. And if you feel like I'm kind of whispering, I am, because my daughter's doing school downstairs. So I'm going to try to be as clear as possible. I don't really see any puzzle dust, to be honest. Let's just open this up finally. All right, here are the pieces. So as stated on the box, they are extra large pieces, as you can very clearly see here. Um, they are. There's really going to be no mistaking what the details are in these pieces. I'm going to be honest, the size of it kind of makes me feel like this is a puzzle for little kids. But that's okay. Anyways, let's take a look at this print here. 
so far from what I'm seeing, it is very clear. The colors look very true to the colors on the box image. Take a look at this piece. This is pretty darn clear. These pieces do have a glossy finish to them as you can see here, so that's good to note. Now the tabs themselves do have a tiny bit of gift to them, which is honestly not surprising because the puzzle is only $3. But in terms of overall thickness and strength, I kind of feel like these are pretty darn good to be honest. So that's the 300 piece. I kind of want to move this to the side and quickly open up the 500 piece so that we can kind of compare that to the 300 pieces. Now obviously the 500 pieces are not the extra large pieces. So you know what, we're definitely going to get a difference in quality and strength and all that. So let's see what we got here. Another thing I noticed with both of these sets is that there's really no puzzle dust in them, which is quite nice. So you pretty much have the same level of gloss finish to these. The print on these pieces is pretty darn good as well. Take a look at that. The colors are very vibrant and they're pretty darn true to the image, almost more vibrant than the image. Look how clear that looks too. That's a great print. Petals on those flowers, that's pretty darn detailed there. And in terms of strength with these pieces, it's pretty much the same. I must say, I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed so far with these two sets. Let's put right now the 500 piece set away for the minute because what I wanna work on first is the 300 piece set. So we're gonna get this one started and finished first. Then we're gonna move on to our 500 piece set. And then we're gonna see if any one of these is better than the other or if they're pretty much the same all right guys let's move on okay so that was simple enough i didn't go too crazy with this because it was only 300 pieces and at first i wasn't even thinking if i was going to sort it but i figured why not but anyways first tray of course are the edges second tray are pieces that i kind of pulled out that had any letters or wording to them. Third tray had pieces with the sky in them. Next tray had all the pieces that I saw any kind of sand on. Next tray were pieces all with grass and these included people in the images anyway. I didn't go too crazy kind of separating all that. Here are pieces with kind of like that transition between grass and sand and then the last tray I did were pieces that just had details with just rides on it for the most part. Again, quick, simple sort. So let's move on. Oh geez, it's funny. But even at 300 pieces, I failed to get all the edge pieces in the right tray. But anyways, I found this to be a super fun and simple image to piece together. And it's hard for me to say which areas were the most challenging. I don't know, maybe parts of the sky? But then again, not really. Now, aside from the fact that this image was great, what also made this a very good experience was the variety of piece shapes. And the pieces fit very well together, nothing popped out. It was a great hold. I only wished that this whole session lasted me a bit longer. This puzzle only took me about an hour to complete. I knew this would be a quickie though. But anyways, after I had my fun with that, I moved on to the next one because my puzzle juices were still flowing. All right, so I did a real quick sort here. I didn't drive myself too crazy. But anyways, first tray, edges. Next tray, I put aside pieces for the house. Third tray has any pieces that have fencing, the deck, and the boats as well. Next tray has pieces with water detail. Then we have one with sky pieces. This one here has anything with animals and the kids. Next tray is pretty much all flowers and plants. And then the last tray is anything that I believe had to do with the trees. So yeah, pretty simple, fairly easy. So let's continue. And yes, once again, I failed to get all the pieces in the right tray. Oh well. After putting the edges together, I didn't really know where to start with first. So I just grabbed whatever tray was on top and just started piecing away. Alright, so 
doing pretty good here so far. We're just about, I guess you could say, just halfway done here. Putting the flower areas together were just a tiny bit tricky, not too hard. Mainly these areas were kind of hard because they kind of look a bit similar. But other than that, a fairly easy image to put together so far. But you know, we still have this sky to do here and this tree, so let's continue. And the house wasn't too bad to piece together. For me, those are usually fairly easy, depending on how grand the house is. What I did struggle with were the big trees. And that is something I usually find fairly challenging for me. And surprisingly, I didn't feel like the sky was too bad, which is rare for me. But honestly, overall, the image was not too challenging. It was a good balance between easy and tough. And of course, I enjoyed piecing it together. This puzzle took me about three hours to complete. But how did this compare to the first puzzle I did? So I wasn't surprised that each of these sets gave me a different experience. So let's start with the 300 piece set. Now, during my sort, I noticed that one or two pieces, I think, were damaged, which honestly is really not bad for a set that doesn't cost you very much. But aside from that, in terms of overall puzzling experience, I have to say, in terms of the fit, it was actually really good. It was certainly a puzzle that didn't crumble on me, which to me, I'm, I'm not a fan of crumbly puzzles. And because the fit was good and it wasn't crumbly, it did stand up to the pickup test. And not only that, quite surprisingly, it actually passed my storage test. So I was able to take it apart in sections quite easily and it held on really well together. Of course, with a couple of pieces falling off, but no big deal. And everything stored in the box really well if you know that's what you wanna do with it afterwards. And even though it's only a 300 count set and it's only $3, you actually get a pretty good variety of piece shapes. So in that sense, it's not boring. And again, these are extra large pieces. So if you're into that kind of thing, this is great. So yeah, overall, this is a pretty solid puzzle set for, for $3. Turned out way better than I expected. Now moving on to the 500 piece set. Now considering what I experienced with the 300 count set, I honestly wasn't too sure what to expect with the 500 count. And as I was puzzling my way through it, one of the things that stuck out to me the most with this particular one was the fit. It was a bit inconsistent throughout the whole image. Some areas were a bit on the loose side and because of that, that particular area would be quite crumbly. But then there were other areas that fit quite snugly, but then those areas kind of had like that lifting off the puzzle board issue. I kind of came across two of my pet peeves on the same puzzle, which was kind of strange to me. So because of those two issues, I kind of already had a hunch that this wasn't gonna hold up well to the pickup challenge. And what do you know, I was right. It turned into quite a disaster. And of course, because of that, there was no way to store this the way I like to store my completed puzzles. But that's okay, because at the end of the day, I still enjoyed putting these images together. They both had a great print on them. It was clear, the colors were vibrant. They have the same level of gloss. They both have a good variety of piece shapes. Really, the only major difference between these two sets that I found was the fit and the hold. And I thought maybe it had to do with the thickness of the piece, and I checked it with the caliper, but they were both actually the same. Now, I don't know, in terms of deciding which one I liked more in terms of puzzling experience, I have to say I do prefer the overall quality and feel of the 300 count set. Now, if the 500 piece set wasn't so crumbly and loose at times, it would kind of be perfect especially for $3, because I did absolutely love this image. I just wish that it held on better together. Really at the end of the day, when it comes to deciding which premium Dollar Tree set you're looking to get, it really just depends on what you care about most in terms of what goes on during your puzzle completion. But then again, everything that I've just said could just not matter to you. And you know, you just pick a puzzle that, you know, calls out to you. So if you've got that puzzle shopping itch and you need to get some new sets, these Dollar Tree premium sets are the way to go. They're cheap, the images are great, and you're still honestly getting an overall decent experience for the price. Now, if you're looking for a place to share your own personal puzzling experiences with me and with other puzzlers, 
I do have an online community that you can join. And I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box below that'll direct you to where that join link is. And if you're new here and you wanna see what else I have to say about other puzzle sets, be sure that you're subscribed. Anyways, guys, I got a bunch of other things that I need to get done today. So I hope you're all doing well. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.